Hello everyone, welcome back aboard the night train. This is new camera, new microphone, my old camcorder decided to give out just before I wanted to film at the weekend. So we're making do with the phone, but I think it's already looking and sounding a lot better. Please let me know how you're finding it in the comments below. Before we jump into the news for this month's Railway Roundup, I just wanted to give a quick update on passenger numbers on the channel. And it seems that some 82% of you aren't actually subscribed who are watching these videos. If you want to stay up to date with the layout progress behind me, with railway related news and whatever other wacky shenanigans I decide to get up to, then please make sure you subscribe to the channel, ring that notification bell and like and comment on all the videos that you enjoy seeing. It really helps me really hone in on the kind of content you're enjoying and want to see more of. So after a barrage of depressing news last month, this month has been a lot lighter and has a lot more positives to it. So let's get right into it. Getting the worst news out of the way first, it seems the LNER's new ticket trial aimed at giving simpler and better ticketing systems for those passengers travelling from London to Newcastle is actually adding over £100 to the cost of passengers' journeys. Campaign group Rail Future has branded the scheme as awful and designed to allow for these big price increases to drive profits. The Chronicle reports that under the trial, the cheapest tickets for some single journeys have risen from £87 up to £193.90 if bought on the day. However, there have been some positives to come out of the trial as well. The 70 minute flex ticket, which allows you to jump on a train 70 minutes before or after the train time that you've booked, has been seen as having a real benefit of allowing people to switch between trains as and when they need to. However, these may not be available when passengers want to travel. Rail Future has urged the LNER to reinstate super off-peak tickets, but also to continue with the rest of the trial. The LNER have responded to these claims by saying that the majority of customers who have bought advanced tickets have paid less than on the old super off-peak fare but there will be, from time to time, traditionally classified off-peak trains where advanced tickets have sold out and a more expensive anytime ticket is the only option available. With calls for change already being cycled, we'll have to see if the LNER decides to tweak or change this trial at all as it continues. Some more positive heritage news this week in that the narrow gauge railway, the Vale of Rydal Railway, has announced that they will be visited by a standard gauge locomotive from the Bluebell Railway. The Bluebell's Duke Dog locomotive, number 9017 Earl of Berkeley, is to be displayed at the Vale of Rydal's new museum under a new agreement signed with the Bluebell Railway. The shed being converted for the new museum is the very same shed that this engine was actually based at and worked from in the 1950s. The locomotive will be on static display, having been out of service since 2011, but the public will now be able to get a closer, more personal look at her at the new museum. Also on display at the museum will be a narrow-gauge Bayer Garrett locomotive and examples of different narrow-gauge rolling stocks, such as the Haffen Tramway Wagons. No opening date has yet been announced for the museum, but as the locomotive is only on loan from the Bluebell for two years, it can't be too far away, so we'll watch this space. The model railway world rejoiced at the start of the month when it was announced that the Hatton's original range was going to live on and had found new homes after Hatton's sad closure. The second batch of Genesis coaches will now be handled and orders fulfilled by Rails of Sheffield, while Acura Scale have taken ownership of the toolings for the P-Class, Andrew Barclays and Warwell wagons and will be fulfilling these orders for customers. While the models now under Acura Scale's umbrella are open for additional pre-orders, Due to the production stage of the Genesis coaches, no additional orders for these can be placed with Rails of Sheffield. Customers with pre-orders from Hatton should have been contacted by either company, and information can be found on their respective websites, linked in the description. Acura Scale have hinted at more Hatton's toolings being under their belt, and have told us to keep an eye out for any future announcements from them, so that sounds very exciting indeed. Overall, a happy ending and a wonderful parting gift from the Hatton's team, 
Thank you to everyone at Hatton's, Rails of Sheffield and Acura Scale for coming together and working this out so that customers are still going to get their highly anticipated models. Alongside the Hatton's original range rising from the ashes, it seems that Worley isn't done yet. The Worley Model Railway Exhibition is coming back this year, albeit in a new form and in a new venue. Worley Model Railway Club announced they have a new October model exhibition and have teamed up with the Statfold Narrow Gauge Museum, who will be their new venue. To be held on the 12th and 13th of October, the exhibition will boast up to 30 layouts, retail traders, as well as full access to the Narrow Gauge Museum and all its attractions. An exhibition with a new look is promised, alongside revamped demonstrations focused on emerging technologies, techniques and demographics in the model railway world. Unlike the NEC, Statfold boasts free parking and more family-centric facilities, which should make it more accessible to people who are trying to visit on a budget or with families. More details will be released soon, but mark up your calendars if you're interested in, in attending and supporting the Worley members that have brought us fantastic exhibitions over the last three decades. This month's star book is the Langotlan Line from Ruabon to Barmouth by W.G. Rears and N. Jones. This book provides a lot of detail and information on various stations along this North Wales line, including the locomotives used, timetables and even track plans for each station, which is an absolute goldmine for any modellers looking to model this particular branch line. That's not what I'm doing, I'm taking a lot of inspiration from North Wales, but I hope still useful. A preserved section of this line runs from Langotland to the newly opened Corwin station and is one close to my heart and unfortunately now very far away for me. This provides a lot of information on local industries and the traffic varieties that ran across the line and if you're interested in checking this out uh, you can pick it up secondhand on Amazon or other pre-owned book sites and the edition I've got is the one with additional material by DJ Lau, which gives even more information on this nice branch line. And now for a little bit of bonus news for the month. We didn't have this last month, but there is something of note here, and it's something that I'm sure all you Thomas fans are going to absolutely love. A runaway train in India managed to travel over 43 miles without a driver before it was eventually brought to a stop. The 53 wagon train carrying stone chips had stopped for a crew change when it rolled away for unknown reasons, and it managed to reach speeds of nearly 60 miles an hour and pass through five stations. A brave railway official managed to stop the train using wooden blocks on the line to reduce its speed and, luckily, nobody was hurt. Luckily, no one was hurt. Investigations are underway, but it's a runaway tale of the same ranks that seems to happen every other day on the island of Sodor. Really, it's a miracle no one was hurt. There we go, an overall brighter month with a lot of positive developments to follow as we progress through the rest of the year. Thanks again for tuning in. My next layout focus video is around the corner, showing you exactly what I've been doing in the back corner over there. You might be able to see, you might not. But until then, please like and share the video, please comment below if there's any railway related news that you want to share or that's caught your eye over this last month. And I'll see you all again very shortly. Thank you. Take care.